So as per instructions of Dr. Rupin sir, I have been asked to talk about the medical management of ED. And as you can see in the flyer, it's written in brackets, phosphodiesterase inhibitors also. Now, basically, this means that uh, we'll be focusing more on the phosphodiesterase inhibitors. But let me start from where we are coming. So whenever we have a patient with erectile dysfunction, we typically have some counseling to do. And then if counseling and lifestyle changes don't work, then we switch over to medications. And then if they don't work, then something like ICI VAD or vacuum injection devices, and then hence we'll move to maybe experimental therapy. And if that also doesn't work, then surgical management. And then something in the future, which I have left as an arrow in the, uh, in the future. So basically the man medical management of erectile dysfunction includes first finding out what are the indications of really treating this patient. What is the possible cause and looking at the right, right medicine for the patient. We have to look at the available medication. We should have the knowledge of all the possible medication that we have in our armamentarium. We have to make the right selection for these patients as to which drug to choose. We have to counsel the patient around the expectation from the management and troubleshoot often and then you know, talk about duration and everything. So let me start first by, you know, talking about the first consultation, which is a crucial consultation because me being from the background of men's health, I understand that men do not come to the hospital. Men coming to the hospital is a rare event. So it takes a lot of courage for a man to come for a consult for erectile dysfunction or for sexual dysfunction. So when he comes to you and he feels that you are capable to really take care of his problem, then you have to over-prepare for it and you have to over-deliver to that man because a repeat consult may never happen. And for a repeat consult to happen, you need to have a good initial consult. You have so the most important thing that we need and Rupin sir will agree to it is time. Uh, we don't need equipment, we need time. We have to counsel the patient with AIDS. He should, uh, he should feel that he's in a professional environment where there are AIDS available for him to be able to describe the problem. Uh, we should be probing into the pathophysiology, explaining the uh, treatment blueprint to the patient so that he understands what's going to happen in case things don't happen the way they are supposed to happen with medicines. And uh, we have to give an effective therapy to the patient uh, because it is the first that you really take care of this patient. The next time when the patient comes, you don't need to give so much time to this patient. If you need less time, it will uh, be a recurring concern once the faith is established. So don't worry about it because, you know, the, the cycle that this patient is coming from is basically that probably from a quack who has more time to give to this patient. He has a gift of gap to give to this patient. He has false reassurances to give to this patient. And because of the poor outcome or the poor experience, he has come to an andrologist probably. And if you're giving less time, uh, if you're if you're not able to convince the patient and if you're not able to give him a effective therapy and relief then again he's going to fall back to the quack so it's going to be a cycle that is going to go on and we have to break the cycle to uh, of course again establish andrology with firmer grounds in the country so let us look at some available medicines which are available so phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors is what our main talk is so what we have available is sildenafil tadalafil avanafil Certain places we have Vardenafil available and then we have Udenafil available in India. So these are only the ones which are available. Apart from that, there are all many other phosphodiesterase inhibitors like Modernafil and others which are not currently available in India. But we also have other medications available like nutraceuticals are available. We have tricyclic anxiolytics which are available, which Rupin sir all said have are sometimes given by androgists. Then we have uh, testosterone replacement therapies and serums available for selected indications, as Dr. Rubin said, it shouldn't be overexploited. And we have phos based therapy also. So let's talk about the phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. So I've tried to make this very, very small table where we'll be doing mainly the talking. So sildenafil, we know it's, it's the wonder drug. It revolutionized the whole world when it came to phosphodiesterase 5, uh, the management of erectile dysfunction. In 1996 onwards, so the dose available are 25 mg, 50 mg, 100 mg. Typically, we start with 50 mg. So the pros of this drug are that it's a very effective drug. Most of will agree on the most potent drug. If nothing else is working for the patient, would still be sildenafil. We'll always ask the patient to try this first and get back to us. It's a trusted drug. And when the, the formulation is right, when the compression of the tablet is right, when it comes from a good company, it's a wonderful drug to treat the patient and establish his faith in allopathic system of medicine for treatment of erectile dysfunction. It has a fast onset of action. So typically you just need to take it an hour or uh, 
half an hour prior. Uh, it has early clearance, so that's a problem. So I want to tell you about early clearance that, uh, you know, sometimes you want the drug to really get away from the body fast, specifically when probably the patient has to resume his nitrates. For example, if he's a cardiac patient on nitrates, we want him to be able to restart fast. Be a good drug of choice because it will go away fast. Similarly, a patient with migraine, you know, because migraine can sometimes be precipitated when we take phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. And in those cases, we want the the pain to go fast so we want to tr try something which gets washed away from the body fast so sildenafil has those kind of pros it's trusted effective and it has faster onset of action and early clearance also now the early clearance can also be a con so it goes on both the sides so the, the selection is important and we're going to go there next but what are the cons of sildenafil blue vision is a con because it uh, cross reacts with phosphodiesterase 6 which is in the retina and you have to take it empty stomach. If you don't take it empty stomach, it's not going to be as effective. And you need to have a good cardiac evaluation. You cannot give it with many other comorbidities. For example, if the patient has been on prostate medicines, it can cause more hypotension than probably tadalafil. So moving on to the next drug, which I may select, which is tadalafil, which comes in a dose of 5 mg, 10 mg, 20 mg, where 5 mg is actually, as per science, only recognized for improving the flow in patients with, with bladder outlet oxygen. Obstruction, not typically for uh, erectile dysfunction. The doses for erectile dysfunction are 10 and 20, but we do very commonly give 5 mg, especially in patients where we are suspecting the psychogenic erectile dysfunction. Now, the pros of tadalafil is that it's a long lasting drug. So, you just, it's sometimes also called the weekend pill. So, people would just take it on Friday and they would have a good Saturday and Sunday, and that will be all they will ever need in the entire week. Then uh, tadalafil is good if you are looking at a regular use for the patient and also something which is upcoming now, which is called the rehabilitative therapy of the penis. It's a very safe drug. You can give it. There are very little interactions that there are with tadalafil, specifically with regards to conduction defects and with regards to other medications. It doesn't require many any significant dose adjustment for the elderly population, which are a significant portion of population coming to us for management of erectile dysfunction. But a con would be that it has a late onset of action and maybe it is not as effective as sildenafil. Uh, this is something that is very And then Panafil, which has been recently uh, on India last year, and I think we were almost the same thing when the first launch was done. And uh, its doses are again 100 mg and 200 mg. The advantage of Avanafil, a source said advantage, I would say it, it didn't really translate into the practical scenario. It's got a fast act concept of action. They typically say that it acts within 15 minutes, but in practicality, sometimes patients take uh, a couple of hours for the effect to come. But they say that it has less side effects, and that's something that I can vouch for that there are side effects of Avanafil are really less. It again has early clearance, so you can give it to patients who want to restart their nitrates or who have had migraine and. You want the system to clear off the drug as soon as possible so that the headache goes away once it starts with taking off phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. Cons are that, you know, it, you cannot rely on it as much as sildenafil. And it probably is less effective than sildenafil, again, just like tadalafil. And again, just for novelty sake, let's also talk about sildenafil, which is in a dose of 100 mg and 200 mg. It is a very good drug. Again, it has a good efficacy. I would say nearly as good as sildenafil, but the cons are the cost and the availability is not as widely available as probably sildenafil or tadalafil are. Now the question arises on selection. So we've already seen the phosphodiesterase inhibitors in a nutshell, which were available. Now, basically, how do I select the right drug? So I look at the age of the patient. I have to see if it correlates with the need, with the comorbidities. The requirement, if it's an SOS requirement, then I would prefer something like sildenafil or a low dose tadalafil. If it's a regular requirement, I like to prefer uh, tadalafil. For past usage, I always ask the patient how's been their experience earlier with the earlier medications, what was the acceptance, what were the side effects that helped me guide to select the right medicine. I look at comorbidities. If they're heart problems, then I choose probably uh, tadalafil or if I want early resumption of nitrates, I choose sildenafil. If there's hypertension, LUTs, again, tadalafil becomes my drug of choice. If migraine, sildenafil becomes my drug of choice. If it's renal or hepatic problems, then tadalafil becomes my drug of choice. Depending on the degree of ED also, I try and make the selection of which drug I would like to give, which medical therapy I should be giving. So basically, my is quite easy to solve. Moderate, typically, we will have to give more potent medicine than if it's severe, we may have to go for combination therapy or move beyond medications. 
Similarly, for associated sexual dysfunction, for example, if there's a patient with premature ejaculation, I want to give that patient depositing as well. So then because of similar pharmacokinetics, I might like to prefer giving sildenafil to this patient. So younger patients typically with SOS thing would require maybe a sildenafil. Also, I have to look at economics, availability, because everything is not available everywhere. Also, when choosing the dose, you have to look at certain contraindications that nitrates and alpha blockers, you have to daily take the history of the patient has been on any of these. You have to look at any medicines that may be uh, going to require a lower dose of phosphodiesterases because they are going to reduce the interaction. For example, the antifungals, and, uh, to name a few, and then there are certain which require more dosage, for example, the rifampacin, phenobarbital, phenytoin, carbamazepine. And then you have to look at renal hepatic insufficiency. And in elderly, you have to reduce the dose. Tadalafil, you may not need to reduce the dose. So some salient points around how I select my drug is if I choose sildenafil typically for younger patients where one night at a time situation is there, whenever there is an occasional need of sexual appetite or opportunity, or as an add-on to Tadalafil if it's not working well, or when other medicines are not working, or when the patient has associated pulmonary hypotension, migraine, or when there's depositing being given or when the patient is of a low socioeconomic status. I typically choose Tadalafil as a workhorse where I'm looking at penile rehabilitation, where I'm looking at weekly demands, weekend demands, where I'm looking at chronic therapy on patients with renal insufficiency or dialysis. Avanafil typically promised as a very good drug, but on patients with who are having severe side effects, I may probably want to prefer Avanafil. Udenafil is just a novel sake, whenever anything else faces, fails, I may want to give this as something that might work. So uh, we know that uh, there's a cross-reaction with a lot of phosphodiesterase inhibitors. So typically, Tadalafil would have phosphodiesterase 11 interactions, so that doesn't cause severe myalgia. Typically, we stop the drug for a few days and restart. If it still happens, we shift to anything else. Typically, we started low dose for elderly patients, for those with lower urine tract symptoms on alpha blockers, and those requiring daily dosage, and those with psychogenic ED or where there are hepatic or renal impairments, higher doses are needed typically on those patients who have poor relief or high distress or, or on drugs which are increasing the metabolism. Counseling is again very important. Uh, you have to try and you know have the couple coming together, give the choice to the patient that has also been seen to really work better in terms of medical therapy. And you have to tell the patient that organic ED would be typically like a lifestyle disease. It can recur, it needs chronic therapy because ED here is endothelial dysfunction, not just uh, you know, it's not just an infection that will go away. There are a few troubleshooting trips. If the drugs are not effective, make sure that the patient has been on empty stomach, he's been compliant, he's not taking any other medicines, keep his expectations to the right level. And if required, we get a testosterone level done because sometimes low testosterone may not make the drug, uh, may make the drug less effective. If there are serious side effects, stop and restart, switch to another. If there's hypotension, choose tadalafil, uh, you know, choose, choose tamsulosin over alfuzosin and do a cardiac evaluation when required. And if you find that the effect is reducing, you can change the drug, go to, go to a combination step of the therapy as discussed. And you have to basically also emphasize lifestyle diseases or changes whenever you are giving a medical therapy. I think since time is short, I have to stop here. Uh, the take home messages are apparently very, very clear. We'll keep in touch. And if there are any more queries, we are happy to solve them on the chat. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Raman, for a very lucid and clear talk in what was actually a very short period of time. So very nice, very useful talk.